Hello all. We all know that the global crude uh, market has crashed in the last week and this week and uh, it's been falling precipitously and uh, you know the US oil benchmark which is the WTI crude made a bizarre turn downturn to negative for the first time and uh, reasons can be attributed the entire energy sector has collapsed many multiple reasons can be attributed to this fall and you know starting with the demand fall due to this shutdown and the demand has fallen by almost 20 million barrels per day and uh, you know the supply is continuing to come in uh, you know the producers are trying to get rid of this um, in pi inventory pile up they want to you know goldman sachs is predicting that you know they might the producers might end up paying to get rid of the oil inventory they have and shutting down wells uh, it doesn't make financial sense for them so there could be many um, situations that's arising out of this scenario and uh, you know globally as well the international um, crude index which is brent crude price also the benchmark has fallen below 20 dollar a barrel and uh, that's the lowest since 99 or 2002 it continues to fall even you know amidst all the opec deal opec and allies coming to a deal to cut short the production but in spite of all that I think seems to be helping, right? So in the interim, many retail investors have burned their fingers trading in these oil funds and uh, like, you know, US oil fund turned negative on Monday. And uh, it's not a good idea. And that's precisely why I'm having this uh, session or in the, this video and uh, to help investors to avoid such pitfalls in, you know, listening to some trading advice, getting into uh, some funds on unknown energy funds and uh, losing money, right? So in order to avoid that, rather a better proposition is to look at what some large re financial institutions are holding or some large investors are holding. Let us understand. And another point of view here is, it's also this is a lesson for us to understand how the legendary investors like Warren Buffett, who has a big stake in uh, say Occidental Petroleum and many other uh, you know energy companies by many other investors, Let's, it's a it's an event for us to understand whether you know how these investors would behave in such kind of crashes, whether they sell it out or whether they will hold for the next one year or two years or three years or how much ever the retracement will happen. We all know that, but it might be a long haul. Will they hold it till then uh, and uh, you know allow these stocks to come back? Let us analyze this situation. So here is uh, you know Berkshire Hathaway. The investment in energy sector, we all know, maybe somebody, some of us would have read in the news. So they had invested around $10 billion in preferred stocks uh, to aid Occidental uh, Petroleum with its acquisition of Anadarko. Now, Berkshire Hathaway had about, um, uh, you know, 2% stake in the shale oil uh, giant Occidental Petroleum common stock and a committed uh, dividend uh, agreement, uh, you know, preferred stock for 8% dividend. And, uh, you know, there is another activist investor, Carl Icahn, famous investor who has invested, who's holding up to 10% stake in Occidental Petroleum and is currently, uh, you know, unhappy. He was, he was unhappy with the team at the hem. There were some rearrangements made. So that's a story with Occidental Petroleum. So Buffett uh, invested, you know, in this firm one year back and uh, the purchase price was around $45 per share. And year to date, uh, this Occidental Petroleum stock has fallen by 75% age. So it's lost three fourths of its value since he invested just one year back in April last year. Now you can see the commodity, uh, you know, the price fall, uh, you know, of Brent in that uh, chart. And look at that uh, drastic sudden fall that happened. And here is Occidental's uh, stock price uh, movement in the last one year since Buffett bought, you know, the highest price was at 47.26 in the year. It's fallen down to, uh, you know, the lows uh, at even uh, $9 at 52 week low. To now it's trading around 12, $12, $13. But still it's 70, 75 percentage down, uh, you know, drawdown on Buffett's investment, YTD. Now, here is one lesson we need to understand, uh, you know, one, one takeaway for us is that, to see how Berkshire Hathaway is going to handle the situation, whether they will sell it out, whether will they will wait through. We all know they are long-term investors, wait for decades on investments. And precisely that's what is going to happen most probably. But then it is a test of time. So we need to wait and see a couple of years from now, three years from now, where the stock will retrace back to the original purchase price. 
Um, and but then there is a deal here. Uh, Berkshire Hathaway is getting uh, a sweet eight percentage dividend during these kind of crisis situations, which is great. So even if the stock doubles in next say ten years, um, so that is a seven percentage, eight percentage compounded growth plus this eight percentage dividend. Still, it's a great deal, I would say. Now um, here is here is uh, another stock which Warren Buffett had held last decade. It's PetroChina. Its price has halved. This is the largest, I believe, uh, petroleum energy company in China. It has fallen almost by 50 percentage in last one year. And its price is halved. You can see the chart here. And uh, 52 week high was around $65. It went to even 27. Now it's trading at $34 per share. So it's an ADR listed in US. So my point is there are energy stocks, uh, although I'm not bullish on energy at all, considering the electric vehicle penetration that's fast proliferating. Uh, but then even if somebody wants to play, find value and uh, you know, do value investing, it's better idea to evaluate companies based on strong uh, you know, investments from big institutions or backing from large investors like these. It's a better sense than you know trading in some funds and ETFs, uh, which can be, um, which can go through very fast upward and downward gyrations, and uh, it can lose its value. And if we are not sure on where we are entering into, it can really damage uh, and wash away the capital that we have. So we need to be very cautious. And these are just two examples. There could be many other stocks which is held by many large investors. Um, you know, even if not, if some some investment we find in energy sector, it's a good idea to evaluate uh, the company's earnings and potential and then make a move.